ones. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we are so thankful that we have you to call upon. Lord, you never get weary. You never uh, are, you're always welcome our calls for to you to intervene, our call to you for strength, our call to you for comfort, our call to you for healing. Lord, we're so thankful that you're always there for us. And Lord, this uh, old world is, is really uh, a challenge and so much heartache. Lord, we're so looking forward to your coming and the final end of misery. There won't be any more sorrow or crying or pain or mourning or sadness or death. Lord, that day is coming soon. In the meantime, help us to prepare our hearts and be ready for your, your coming. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we do want to lift up these dear ones that we just mentioned uh, to you. We lift them up that you would intervene according to your purpose and plan. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you go out today, we have some extras of these flyers. If there's someone that you know that you think would enjoy uh, this concert, please um, invite them to come and bring them along with you. Walking in the Spirit in the last days. The vital importance of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus' personal representative on planet Earth. God's representative is not a human being. God's representative is the one and only Holy Spirit. That in, and he is responsible for us being here today. We're only here because the Holy Spirit has drawn us and put in our heart a desire to be here. Our, our Bible uh, reading this morning, taken from Romans chapter 8, is powerful in walking in the Spirit. I'm not going to read it again, but please read through the book of Romans. Romans, uh, right through the book of Romans, and especially Romans uh, 6, 7, and 8. Powerful message of walking in the Spirit of Christ. We've talked about the importance of the Holy Spirit, it's, uh, he is so vitally important to us uh, to walk uh, in the Holy Spirit because he, God has given us a task. And that task, he said, this gospel must be preached to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And, the end, and then the end shall come. So he's given us a job to do. And that job is a vital job for us um, as we exercise faith in him and we go about our father's business uh, he blesses us and he empowers us and we get to know him better because he is able to use us to touch people's lives as we have heard even uh, spoken of earlier today in uh, in how uh, God has impressed a gentleman from another church uh, with the book um, Hacksaw Ridge, the story of Desmond Doss, powerful story, powerful witnessing book, uh, brings out the beautiful message of the Sabbath. It brings out how Desmond Doss uh, was, went from someone that was hated by his leaders and by his fellow soldiers, disrespected because he, act, he, wanted, he did not want to kill. He, didn't want, he did not want to carry a gun. He didn't want to shoot anybody. Uh, he had seen violence, gun violence, earlier in his life. And he always looked at the Ten Commandments. And it always, that one that says, thou shalt not kill, was so embedded in his mind. He said, I cannot kill. And so, but he wanted to serve his country. And so he chose to, rather than take life, he chose to save life. And God used him with that, he put that in his heart, and he faithfully served. And even though he was being, being derided and, uh, and being 
persecuted quite severely if you've ever read the book or if you've ever watched the film Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, he was really, really treated poorly. But he had a vision of what God wanted him to do and he didn't let anything discourage him. And we need to have that same spirit. Our job is to share the love of Christ with every human being that we come in contact with. Whether it's a smile, whether it's an encouraging word, whether it's giving them a little track to read, something for them to think about, whether it's uh, doing a Bible study, whether it's inviting them to do a Bible study. The worst thing that someone can say if you say, would you like to study the Bible and prepare it to get to know Jesus better or to, to find out what's going on in the world today? What's the worst thing they could say? No. But you know what? Every no, there's, a, there's another, you're closer to the yes. So just keep looking for people that have an interest and, and take them time to study the Bible. But it's a daunting task. But anyway, Desmond Doss, um, this uh, brother, loved his story and has been giving out, as, as Edith said, thousands of these beautiful books that includes our message in, in that book, which is a really, so we have missionaries, uh, very committed missionaries, not of our church, doing God's work. And then giving out Bibles uh, to, uh, which I love that, uh, you know, giving out Bibles to women in women's shelters and giving a Bible and Bible readings for the home, which has our whole message in it. Beautiful book. Uh, and beautiful, and our message is not our message, it's God's message that he's entrusted us to give. It's a good message. It's a wonderful message. It's the everlasting gospel. We talked about it last time, the three angels message and uh, how inclusive it is. And, and it especially prepares people to, um, to honor God and to keep his Sabbath and to give him glory and, to, and it helps us to understand that his judgment is going on right now so that we are serious. You know, the Day of Atonement was a very serious time for the children of Israel. Ten days before the, the final Day of Atonement, they prepared their hearts, they searched their hearts. It's not business as usual for Christians today. It's not just looking for a church that will entertain you. It's looking for a church that will challenge you and that will, that is solidly founded on the Word of God and it's about us, uh, not so much, even so much about a church, but it's about our own personal uh, time with Jesus, spending time with him, saturating our mind and our hearts with Christ. And uh, whether you're young or old, take time to read the Bible. We can read all kinds of books, but you know, don't, don't neglect your Bible. Isn't there a little song about that? A little song about that children sing about your Bible? And if you... Uh, you grow, 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 and if you neglect your Bible, you shrink, shrink, shrink. Isn't there a song like that? Does anyone know that little song? Can you sing it for us? Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Amen. There's another chapter about not reading your Bible, another verse, not reading, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. But we'll just leave it to, let's grow, grow, grow. You're a beautiful choir. You're a beautiful choir. We've missed our choir, but we have a choir right here. Thank you so much. That's so beautiful. So let us take time to prepare our hearts. You know, it's sobering when you think of it. It's sobering how tenuous life is. How in just a heartbeat your life can come to an end. Or, and, you know, you can have a massive stroke. Who would have ever imagined our dear Rita would be, who is improving uh, in the hospital, all of a sudden has a massive stroke and now she's on her deathbed. But the good news is with Rita is that she loved Jesus, completely committed to him. Was a, was, you know, she loved the Lord, she loved the, the message, the three angels message, and she kept, uh, kept the Sabbath faithfully, gave up jobs, lost jobs because of the Sabbath, uh, but was willing to do that because she felt like it was more important to be obedient to God than to make money and to have a job. And she, she believed that God would provide, and he did provide her. Um, 
So, um, so we're thankful uh, that God is at work and he's at work in our lives. So it is a challenging job. We have 7.8 million people in the world we've got to give the gospel to. Uh, we have 385,000 babies being born every day and 140 million each year and our church is only 20 million strong. So how can we do this impossible task? 548 cities with a population of 1 million or more people and all we have is 20 million people. But can God, can God do things with a few? Yes. Absolutely. What about Gideon? You know look at what God whittled down that group from how many down to how many? 350. That's all he needed was 350 committed people. All he needs is a church family here of our church family and friends of, uh, to, to be committed and we can do the job that God has called us to. He can multiply. Uh, Jesus needed to feed the 5,000 and all he had was, uh, it was, uh, was it uh, four loaves and three fishes or two fishes and four loaves? I, I can't quite remember but uh, how, what was it? What, it does vary actually according to different gospels but uh, the bottom line is he started with a very little bit of food, but he multiplied that food and fed 5,000 plus women and children. And there was left over, there was a surplus left over. That's how God does his work. And so find the ministry that God has called you to do and do it faithfully and let God work miracles through, your, through you and through your life. Um... Um, is not a very smart thing to say. Um, 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 um. <laughs> uh, so the vision of the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14, confirms Jesus' words in Matthew 24. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to in, all, in all the world as a witness to all nations. God just needs a witness in every nation. He needs a witness in every nation. Uh, can I hear a witness? I love that. I love the black preachers. Can I hear a witness? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, they're, I love our black congregations. They're alive. Yeah, you know, they're not dead. Not that we're dead. We just do it differently. <laughs> We just do it differently. We worship differently. But, I, you know, uh, the world is full of, you know, we all worship Seventh-day Adventists. It would be very interesting to do a film. And do a film of Seventh-day Adventist worship around the world. Because there's, there's so many cultures. There's so many languages. There's so many styles. There's so many, but we can all worship God. And we're unity. We worship our God. We may do it a little differently in different places. You know, you go, go to Guyana. They're not going to be sitting quietly in the pew. They're really active. They're, they're active listeners. You know, they're a and they love to give the gospel. So, you know, it's, it's a neat thing. I'd love to see a film. Donna, why don't you work on that film for us? Uh, get a, you know, we've got to make a film of uh, worship around the world. Maybe do uh, one song. Do one song and have it, uh, you know, um, in all the different language groups and the cultures around the world. One song, all sung by the same people in different languages all around the world and, uh, and see how it looks because it'll look very beautiful because that's God's children is singing and, and doing such an amazing, amazing thing. So God wants this gospel preached. And he says, um, uh, they will rise to the challenge. God has a mighty, now there's a revival coming. And the revival, and I truly believe that revival can happen right here. You know, I mean, I think our financially we are committed, right? I mean, we're praising the Lord. Our tithe last year was about $367,000 from this little church. And people think, oh, it's a bunch of old people. They're all retired. No, we're not all retired. And even if we are retired, we're generous with our retirement. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, when you think about it, so much of our ministry done here is done with retired people. And uh, others that, you know, because the working folks are working during the day, but we have, if you go up to Hilltop, you'll see a lot of high retired people working their hearts out, getting the bags all ready to go for, uh, to our, for our community. Uh, but the bottom line is, we have a generous, we're generous financially. You know, God, we had a surplus in our church budget. You know, so we had our tithes, and we had our free will offerings. And even though we were 100 and somewhat 90,000 or something like that, no, 100 and maybe around 100 
twenty hundred and nine thousand, but then we had also raised another uh, four thirty five or forty thousand for this for the sign. And we also raised another 40000 for hilltop renovations and other things that we did. So, you know, so what I'm saying is we're committed financially. And uh, so that, that commitment financially is, is really shows where our heart is. And so we just need to, um, you know, to, to, to just continue to pray and ask God to pour his spirit out, the Holy Spirit out, and to inspire more of us to become more... Uh, uh, more giving the gospel oriented, if you know what I'm saying. In other words, don't be afraid. Take those, those glow tracks. Share the glow tracks. Take books. Have them in a box in your car. And, uh, you know, when you find someone that has interest, give that book away. When you, uh, uh, you know, get some Bible studies, have some Bible studies ready, and, and give them the first lesson. Hey, take a look at this. If you like it, read it. Uh, fill it in. I'll correct it, and we'll give you the next one. Uh, you know, be praying, pray, pray, pray constantly. Lord, open up opportunities for me to share the love of Christ. We have an amazing message, the everlasting gospel. And we, it's also a message of warning. Do not be deceived by some false system that's going to come along and try to force you to worship a certain way. Stick with what the Bible says. That is uh, very much part of our, our, uh, our vital message to the world. And so... Uh, we have it through the spirit of prophecy. Uh, you know, our, our, well, I'm just going to say that our, we, there's a mighty revival going to happen among God's people. And uh, so I believe it can happen right here, and, and I believe it is happening here. Uh, they will, they'll rise to the challenge, God's people will. They realize the urgency of the hour. It's urgent now. And uh, this is the day of atonement. It's urgent. Ten days of preparation, preparing our hearts, and then uh, and giving the message. And so filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, we, the re revival of the love of Christ will come into our lives and will be able to share it in the community. Truth, uh, we'll be able to share the truth to a sin-polluted world dying in sin. Is this world dying in sin? It is. You can see it everywhere. Dying in sin. And if we hold on to sin, we will also be dying in sin. We don't want to be lost in the house of God. We don't want to be lost in the house of God. We want to be saved in the house of God. We, we want to be spirit-filled uh, Christians so excited about Jesus. Ellen White says, Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The spirit and power of God will be poured out among his children. Isn't that exciting? The spirit and power of God. Find someone to pray with. Find someone to encourage. And let's pray for this outpouring of God's spirit. At that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of the world has supplanted the love of God and his word. Many, both ministers and people, will gladly accept those great truths which God has caused to be proclaimed at this time to prepare a people for the Lord's second coming. Many people have never heard this message and they need to hear it. And so let us give it in season and out of season. Let us give this message. So before the message of the Revelation 14 is proclaimed to the entire world, a spiritual revival among God's people will enable them to cooperate with God in finishing the work under the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray together for that spiritual revival in our own hearts, in our church family, and let us find opportunities to be able to share God's love with somebody every day. And if it's not just one, it's two. Uh, come alongside those that are suffering, those that are hurting, those that need your special touch. I, just a short story and from uh, Timor East. It used to be called East, uh, used to be called 
uh, East Timor was, and then it, it got its independence. It, uh, its history it has a, was a Portuguese uh, community in, in, in the islands of Indonesia. Uh, it's generally Roman Catholic, uh, and like the Philippines, uh, also Roman Catholic. And uh, there's a story, it was a mission story, and it was a young lady. She, uh, uh, her sister, a young, a young sister called me, ex my young sister, sorry, my younger sister called me, excited one day. Sister, she said, I'm studying the Bible and the lessons are very, very good. Come and we can study together with the missionaries. Uh, hearing the enthusiasm of, my, enthusiasm of my sister's voice, my curiosity was aroused and I met with her and a uh, married couple, uh, Yolanda and Luis, uh, who were Bible workers. Please teach me about the Bible, I asked them. And I, I was studying at the university in Dili, uh, the capital of Timor Least. And my sister, um, Ermelinda, was studying at high school in the same city. We both came from a small rural village. I studied the Bible with the couple almost every day. The Bible lessons fascinated me. I learned about God's love for me. I learned one, that, that one day I could show my love to God by honoring Him with my body, including eating uh, clean foods, giving up the unclean foods. I learned that the, 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 the big way to love God was by keeping his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's part of the three angels' message, a vital part. The big test in the end will be about the commandments of God, worshiping the God of all, t who, uh, God of the Sabbath, and the Sabbath is the sign between us and God that we are, that we are sanctified. And so the Ten Commandments is a very important message. It's not legalism. Amen? It is simple, loving obedience to God. Simple, loving. I heard the fourth commandment, which begin. I had never heard of the fourth commandment, which begins with remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This little girl was learning about Jesus and learning about his love and his law. When I realized that God had never changed his holy day to Sunday, I asked the couple uh, where I could worship on the seventh day, of the, uh, on the Sabbath. I want to keep the Sabbath day, but where can I go to church, I said. We have a church in Dili, uh, Louise said. You can go there every Sabbath, Yolanda said. And uh, so um, Emelinda and I uh, went to church together. After attending church for two weeks, now they had studied the Bible, they were ready, and after two weeks they decided to get baptized and join the Seventh-day Adventist church. Our older brothers were furious when they found out that I had left the family. Uh, church. Uh, they threatened me uh, and beat me. Uh, you, you will not study here anymore, uh, one brother said. I will bring you back home to the village, uh, said the other. My brothers forced me to leave my studies and return with them to the village. They made me eat pork and to go to church on Sundays. I felt sad. I had, I had to lock myself in the bathroom to read my Bible and to pray. But threats and beatings strengthened my faith. Do you have opposition to your faith? Strength, maybe not that bad, but there may be some opposition. Some of you may have opposition. Maybe you get a hard time by family members who are of another faith or of no faith. But this young lady said, that the threats and beatings strengthened her faith. I resolved to love God with all my heart and to keep his commandments. That is super important. It's super important to love God with all our heart and keep his commandments. Because every sin in our life is a violation of one of those commandments. Whatever weak area, whatever your area, the sin that so easily besets you, you're breaking one of his commandments. And so by his grace, he gives us power to obey him. He says, I'll write my law in your heart and in your mind. I'll write my laws in your hearts. The threats and beatings went on for a month. My younger sister fortunately was able to stay in the capital. She called to tell me that the Adventist church was organizing a two-month training program for Bible workers. 
I wanted to be a Bible worker more than anything else. I wanted to be like uh, Juliana and Luis, who had taught me about the Bible, about Jesus. I wanted to teach others about God. One day, I ran away from home without telling anybody. After two months of training, I became a Bible worker. I loved my work, and I threw myself into it 100%. I prayed daily for my family, and especially for my brothers. Do you pray for your enemies, those that despitefully use you and persecute you? This young lady was a born-again Christian, and she did. Two years passed, and I married my husband, uh, Rinaldo, Rinaldo uh, who is an Adventist. Uh, she made a good decision. Why do we encourage people to marry within our faith? Why do we do that? Because God wants us, doesn't want us to be unequally yoked. It is true that you may have made a mistake and married outside the faith, but I'll tell you, if you want to have a happy and harmonious life, marry someone of the same faith so that you can share the most important thing together, and that is your love for God and the Sabbath and the commandments of God. So you're not fighting, you know, always in tension. You know, keep, stay within the faith. You say, well, there's no one around. Ask God. He'll send the right person for you at the right time. And it's not all that bad to be single for those that are single. It's not a horrible thing. In fact, uh, some people probably wish they had remained single because they're single again. And uh, things didn't work out well. So pray before you before you uh, make a decision having to do with your future plans, especially in relationships and marriage and all the rest of it. No one from my family attended the wedding. Thanks be to God, my family has started talking to me again. I am so, I'm also grateful to God for three children who are now studying at the only Adventist school in Timor Leste. Uh, please pray for my brothers and the rest of my family. Pray that the school will be able to teach my children about Jesus and his word. Now, uh, the 13th Sabbath offering six years ago built the, um, built the, the school there. And now this next uh, f um, offering, the next uh, uh, will be uh, used to construct a dormitory for the school so st children from other villages will be able to go to a school as well. So let us pray for a spiritual revival. This young lady, someone, that nice young couple, uh, or an older couple actually, that studied with these girls, took the time to study. And they, look at how the thing, you know, how, how God multiplies when we take the time to share. We have no idea when someone, uh, when, when Mark Finley's father, who was an Adventist, his mom was not an Adventist, when he studied with his son, and then when his son studied with others and was baptized, who in the world would have ever imagined the impact that Mark Finley would have had in the world? Thousands and thousands of people have come to Christ. And, you know, Doug Batchelor, you know, when he was living in the cave without any clothes on, walking around, uh, you know, whoever would have imagined those that, um, that God drew him, but that who studied and prepared him and baptized him would ever have have imagined, you know, the impact that he would have on the world. And who would have imagined, you know, when you studied and you prepared and you were baptized, the impact that you have on the world that we're, where we live. And so let us faithfully ask for the Holy Spirit to bring about a spiritual revival. So yeah, I'm not comfortable. You know, God's called us, God given us an opportunity for the health partnering. You know, well, I'm, 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 you know I'm, not a, I'm sort of afraid, I don't know much about this or that. Just go for it, go for it, go for it, just go for it. And let the Lord give you the, uh, the increase and give you the courage that you need. You know, don't live in fear. Perfect love casts out how much fear? All. Almost all fear. Yeah. All. all, okay, thank you, all fear. Okay, let us pray. Precious Lord, uh, we need a revival in our hearts, each one of us. 
And we need a re daily revival. We need to be revived daily, Lord. We need the outpouring of your Holy Spirit so that we can, in our little area here, in our little region of your vineyard, that we can do the work you've called us to. In our workplace, uh, in our community, in our neighborhood, Lord, that we can shine for you and that we can prepare people for your second coming. Lord, that is so important. Lord, it's a mission that you've called us to and it's an, a mission that you have promised to empower us to do. That, you, uh, that you, will, you would send your Holy Spirit. If we simply ask for your Holy Spirit, you will empower us to be able to share this wonderful, loving message of Jesus to a broken and hurting and, uh, world that needs you more than anything else. So Lord, this morning we just want to put our hand up and say, Lord, please uh, put a, give me uh, a commitment to you that will bring about a revival in my heart so that I can go and share your love with others from a real honest heart transformed by your love so we have something to share, to testify of who you are and that you have power to change even broken hearts, broken lives like ours, that you can make us whole again. We thank you, dear Lord. Bless us and keep us close to your heart and actively involved in sharing your love with others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.